So I think all of these startups, if, if anybody in the US was watching this interview, they could probably relate to them. Um, but then you took a leap and you ended up in Tanzania for the company you're working on now. And how did that happen? What drew you into that market? And tell us a little bit about Offgrid. Man, that's, that was just a ridiculous idea. I can't believe it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it hasn't worked out yet. Like, you know, it's fate still to be written, but at least, like, we, we, are, we are serving some customers. Um, so, so how'd that work? So I, I got, uh, I was lucky enough to get um, the Skull Scholarship to Oxford. Mm -hmm. So I got, um, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful program. And it basically, you get an Oxford MBA paid for for free, and it's a year-long program. And, and so you go there and spend some time and think about big problems in the world. Um, uh, so, so I went there and I, I just got obsessed with this thing about um, uh, off-grid energy. So I'd, I'd experienced it firsthand because I'd been, been traveling to Africa. I was yeah. uh, very interested in Africa and, and its growth. Um, I was very interested in solar um, and I felt like solar was like this incredible revolutionary technology that would would find all these interesting applications, but they wouldn't be immediately obvious. And then, like, the, the places where they're probably the most useful would not be even in the first place that they'd be adopted. So, like, in the US, like, our electric grid works. So if you adopt solar, it's either for green reasons or because it's cheaper than the grid. And yeah. well, that's relatively hard to do. But if you just need electricity, like this technology, you can just put on your roof and here comes electricity. Like, that's, that's completely revolutionary. Hmm. And, uh, you know, it takes, um, but making that relevant for the average person, you know, it's not just as though it's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, so that was what really fascinated me about the market. And it was very, very early on in that when I, when I got interested in it. And, and, and um, really, our, our friends at D-Light were, were one of the pioneers. Yeah. Just, I mean, nuts what they had to do with the technology at the time. <laughs> I mean, it, they did not have these fancy cheap LEDs and these lithium yeah. batteries. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was it was really expensive stuff, and they were gutsy, and they got in early yep. and, and uh, just started making it work. Yep. You know, that's not that's not an easy journey. So then I looked at I looked at them, and I looked at some of the other guys, and was like, okay, well, where is this going? Like, where it's going is like people doing real like big power. Like, it starts at solar lanterns, and a lot of people thought that was like what the market was. But actually, that was like the nascent seed. It was like the internet in 95, and we had like no useful websites, and everyone was on a dial-up modem, and like, but that's not where it's going. So yes. where it's going is everybody produces their own power, and your power is an asset rather than a, an expense. Mm. And, um, and, and solar gives us this ability to have power be scalable. So if I need a little bit of power and I can afford a little bit, I can pay for that. I can kind of build on it. Whereas the grid is binary. You either have it or you don't, yeah. which is why there's you know 1.2 billion or so people who don't have the grid at all then at least that many who have a grid that's so unreliable that they, you know, it's almost unfunctional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, can you, can you walk us through, I think a lot of people, you look at solar and you look at its ability to replace fuels like kerosene, and if you say, we're selling this at a price that's cheaper than kerosene at a daily rate, um, and then you can lease to own, yeah. potentially. The, the model seems to make sense, um, but how hard has it been to actually execute on the idea? And what's been hardest? Fucking difficult. <laughs> Let me just tell you. <laughs> so we, so it turns out I didn't just get to build one startup in this company. Yeah. I had to build a hardware startup, mm. but that's just like the entry point. Yeah. Then I had to build an African sales and distribution startup <laughs> to sell my hardware startup's products. Yeah. But then I had to build a um, consumer finance startup because none of the startups, none of the. Uh, <laughs> I said, so this fintech startup needed to finance the products my hardware startup was selling to the African consumers yep. through my sales and marketing startup. Yep. Yep. And then I needed to build a software startup to manage all this because <laughs> it's not in, almost impossible to integrate with every mobile payment system yep. in Africa and keep track of salespeople and service people running all over the place and custom, mm. 100,000 plus customers, like keep track of all that without, without some really good software. So, mm. so you know, building Building all these startups at once is expensive. It's difficult, um, you know. Uh, operating across time zones, across geographies, it's tough because I don't have personal context. Yeah. You know, I didn't grow up on the grid, off the grid, yeah. um, so I have to learn, you know, learn the language, learn the context, learn learn the environment. That's why I moved to Tanzania when we started the company. Um, so, you know, I felt it was important enough to just pick up and 
give myself a massive pay cut and get, you know take some seed funding and, and go just try to try to figure it out. So I mean, we landed there with like, I mean, yes, a business plan, but like didn't that almost got thrown out in day one. Yeah. Like no technology, <laughs> no no nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And our, 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 <laughs> our first hundred customers were literally, um, we bought off the shelf solar equipment, we set up a little kiosk in like one part of town, yeah. and then we had a, our prepaid hardware was a large Maasai guy. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy would walk around every month and collect money from you. <laughs> and take your solar system back if, <laughs> if you didn't pay. <laughs> Simple but effective. Yeah. <laughs> it could work. <laughs>